The distinguished UK medical journal, The Lancet, has issued two apocalyptic reports about our global food system within the past month. Now, one apocalyptic report, I'm like, whatever, all right? But a little bit of apocalypse, you know, never hurt anybody. But two, two, maybe we should pay attention. Here to explain is our senior eater of food, John of O'Donnell. Welcome. Thank you. It, uh, it's true. I am an eater of food. Um, in fact, six months ago, I started an all meat, all the time diet. Just meat, 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 and more meat. I love it. I've lost 30 pounds. My skin is clearer than the mind of a high level Scientologist. And my penis doubled in size to average. I believe we have a before and after pic. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not of my penis, silly, of me, relax. <laughs> Thank God, but John, you've been vegan for the past six months, I've seen it. That's the opposite of eating meat. What are you talking nope, about? I've been on an all carnivore diet, just like my alt-right hero, Jordan Peterson. And it's a good thing too, because overall, the Lancet guidelines called for a doubling of global consumption of fruits, nuts, vegetables, and legumes, and cutting the consumption of red meat in half. And I always cut my red meat in half right before I eat all of it. I'm not an animal. I'm not a delicious, succulent, mouth-watering animal. Look, I don't know why you're lying about your diet, but I'm sure the zany reason will be revealed over the course of this segment. Yes, I'm sure it will. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, good, good, good. First, though, tell us more about the new reports. Okay, uh, one of them highlights that civilization itself is at risk from both a human health perspective and an ecological perspective, and the other one finds that pandemics of obesity and malnutrition are interacting with climate change in a feedback loop. I don't really understand what that means, but I'm willing to bet that that feedback loop sure is tasty. No, no, it's, it's, it it's catastrophic, John. 11 million people die every year from diet-related preventable diseases, and the global food system is responsible for up to 30% of total greenhouse gas emissions. Right, it's not true. That's good. That's true. Also, more than 800 million people are chronically undernourished, and 2 billion suffer from micronutrient deficiencies. But on a positive note, there are also 2 billion people who are overweight or obese. So that's a win. <laughs> not, not a win. By, by 2050, the population will be 10 billion, all right? If we want to be able to feed everybody and not destroy the planet, we have to drastically reduce how much meat we're eating. Why? Why? Because producing beef uses 20 times the land and emits 20 times the emission as producing beans per gram of protein? Or because one-third of all grain produced globally is used as animal feed? Or because in the United States, 80% of antibiotics are used in livestock production, which could create the next super virus? <laughs> yeah, all of those things, yeah, all of that. Fair enough, yeah. that makes all sense. of that. Yeah. Look, I understand it's unfair to make the, the, the individual feel responsible when it's the food industry that's bombarding us with bullshit ads and, and an unsustainable system. But if we don't step it up, what's the alternative? I'll tell you what the alternative is. Start getting all of your information from Beef Magazine. <laughs> It's a real publication, and it's glorious. It's changed my whole perspective on things, man. Yes, I've been vegan for the past six months, okay? And by all accounts, it's dramatically improved my health. But that was before I found out about hard-hitting Beef Magazine articles, such as, study finds vegetarians have smaller brains. <laughs> I've been vegan. Just imagine how small my brain must be. I want to get me a big, bad, bona fide beef brain, baby. Yeah. Plus, have you seen the centerfolds? Ooh la la, yeah. Mm. Johnny likey.